Sarah, I think all of us have been surprised to some extent by the scale and scope um, of the coronavirus crisis in New York City. And wanted to get your thoughts on what are some of the things that we were prepared for in the municipal healthcare system that, that you help run? And what were things that we missed um, in responding to the coronavirus crisis? So one of the things that you know we've been doing on an ongoing basis is what we call maintaining our state of readiness for whatever may walk in through our door. So whether it's Ebola, whether it's a severe respiratory disease, or whether it's measles. Right, so it's a very wide spectrum because one of the things we know, we've learned from past experience is that, you know, it just takes that one person uh, to start an outbreak. It just, uh, these outbreaks are constantly happening all around us. History has shown us that, you know, we're not alone, right? So just because there's an isolated outbreak happening in one country doesn't mean that it's not going to, you know, affect us here in the United States. You know, these are just one uh, plane ride uh, away, if you will. Um, and Again, we've seen uh, a number of these outbreaks start uh, in that fashion. Most similarly, uh, most recently with, with measles that we uh, responded to um, in New York City. And so we know these are not one-off events, they're gonna continue to happen. And so by maintaining our state of readiness and having a good foundation in place to be able to identify these patients right away, isolate them, and then make the proper notifications and implement you know, our infection control strategies, that's really been our cornerstone of any type of epidemic response. And this held true during Ebola in 2014. It held true uh, during measles just most recently, and now obviously COVID-19. But being able to augment that and making sure that we're able to provide the resources that is needed, um, obviously that is key because every epidemic is different. And so, you know, you've seen one epidemic, you've seen one epidemic. And each epidemic brings uh, different challenges with that, with it, um, and that certainly is true with COVID-19. Um, it has, pro you know, proven to be uh, an outbreak that has affected not just healthcare systems, but everybody, right? So at the local, state, national, and international level, um, here in New York City, here and from a healthcare uh, perspective, some of our main goals right now is really protecting our frontline staff and our patients, and making sure that our frontline staff. Um, have the resources that they need to be able to save lives. That's, uh, you know, a huge goal. Another goal, obviously, is reduce nosocomial transmission. And what that means is that the cornerstone of any response is basic infection control, making sure you have processes and resources and programs in place to be able to reduce the number of cases, both within the facility, but really also looking at community transmission, how we can reduce the number of patients coming in, obviously, with this devastating uh, disease, if you will. And the third is really maintaining and augmenting our, our workforce. So you're as good as the people that are in it. And if you don't have enough staff, well, you can't you know, run uh, or manage a ship, if you will. And so making sure you have the workforce and the support that they need, uh, which is extremely important. And then obviously making sure that our supply chain integrity uh, remains, you know, a big impact that we're seeing with COVID-19 is the enormous impact it's having on supply chain. And what we know, this is not something new, and but something that we're feeling even more so with COVID-19 is that we rely on a globalized supply chain um, and it's extremely dangerous and we're very vulnerable to that. And so, you know, hoping that uh, a lot of these lessons learned that we're facing right now, we're able to uh, prepare better for the future epidemics and pandemics that are going to be uh, coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And as we look ahead uh, from a policymaking perspective, what are some of the resources that the New York City uh, public hospitals need to be, uh, first of all, to come out of this crisis immediately? And what do you think are the longer term needs to make the hospital system more resilient? So I think just, you know, whether it's, it's health and hospitals or any, you know, healthcare system that's feeling the brunt of COVID-19, what has always worked and what will continue to work is if we rely on communication, you know, horizontally, vertically, um, and obviously internally and externally, the coordination that happens, and then the collaboration. So we call these, you know, the three C's, communication, coordination, collaboration. We need to do that both internally within a system and then externally with our public health partners. And we know, and as you know, this has been said many times, we're all in this together. And that is extremely true because we need to rely on each other to face this type of pandemic that we're in. While it's happening here in New York City, in New York State, we know other states are not far behind. Um, while we're preparing now for our second wave, some states are preparing for their first wave. And so we need to be able to rely on each other, not just for lessons learned, but also be able to collaborate with one another in our time of need, because we know that while we have the resources here today, tomorrow someone, 
someone else may need it. And we need to make sure these pathways and these channels exist. Um, and we shouldn't feel as if that we're isolated um, and that we that we can't share some of these resources. So uh, something that we really hope to, to move forward with. And where does that coordination need to happen? At what level? Who is best placed to run that? And so, well, from an EM standpoint, we know that all incidences are local. So we need to make sure that we have local leadership, you know, taking on these types of events. But at the same time, this is greater than any city, any state, any nation. This is a pandemic of epic proportion. This is something that every country is facing really, um, you know, around the world, if you will. And so, you know, this needs to be taken, uh, this approach needs to be taken at the highest level. Um, and so while we have leaders at the local level, for example, our, our, the mayor here in New York City doing a tremendous job really looking at how to respond to COVID-19, but also mitigating some of the effect, effect it's having on social distancing, if you will, providing some of the support uh, economically, socially, um, you know, but also looking at it from a state and federal standpoint and making sure that everybody is providing the resources that we need. Um, because again, this is, this is a global event. This is not just something that is specific to any one state or one nation. Right. So I wanted to ask you finally how we kind of get back to normal. And obviously there's a series of steps that, um, that New York City will need to take. But uh, something that we've been kind of passing around here is there was a recent New York Times op-ed by the president of Brown University that's talking about how colleges must open in the fall. Um, clearly that's top of mind for leadership at, at Harvard as well. What are your reactions to that? Do you think we're in a place to anticipate opening universities in the fall? And what would need to happen to make that a reality? So we have to be very cautious in, in our approach in terms of opening up. And obviously nobody wants to shelter in place. No one wants to you know, uh, be in the current situation that we're in for a long period of time or even for a short period of time. You know, uh, These are not just lives um, at stake, but also um, our, our livelihood in terms of economy and, and, and financial support and, and the like. Uh, but, but there needs to be uh, you know, a phased approach because at the end of the day, our goal is to reduce the number of of mortality and morbidity associated with COVID-19. And if you start to prematurely open up without having a infrastructure or system in place, you're going to see more cases of COVID-19, which trans translates into, into more morbidity and more mortality. And this is not something that we obviously want to do. And so there needs to be uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. When I mean by infrastructure, we need to make sure that we have, and I'm sure as everyone has been inundated with the testing capability, right? So what we need to make sure is that anybody that needs a test is able to get a test because what this is able to do is tell you if you have COVID-19, so you're able to then isolate yourself. We're able to contact trace those that obviously have, you've come in contact with and then quarantine them as needed. Because we really wanna make sure that we're, we're stamping out some of these outbreaks that are they're, they're inevitably gonna pop up because we're going to open up uh, you know, certain sectors, if you will. But on top of that, we also need to look into um, you know, mitigating some of the effects of social distancing. We know social distancing is going to be in, uh, in play for the long run, because really that is one of our most effective tactics without having a therapeutic on hand. So no vaccine, no treatment for COVID-19 right now. And so one of the most effective strategies is social distancing. And so this is going to continue to play out in some form or fashion. But what we really need to do is make sure, making sure that at the local level, so businesses, universities, um, you know, workplaces really look into how they can implement some of these social distancing measures while maintaining, you know, um, their, uh, you know, uh, their mission. So whether your mission is obviously educating uh, students or providing healthcare services, we need to make sure that we have uh, a system in place and a process in place. And this may translate into staggered work shifts, you know, um, you know, teleworking more, providing more, you know, resources um, and education remotely limiting the number of people really coming together. So really those are some of the strategies that really need to be thought out at the local level um, in order for this to really uh, to take into effect if we wanna open up any of these academic institutions. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. Dr. Sarah Madad is the Senior Director and System-wide Special Pathogens Program uh, Director at New York City Health Plus Hospitals. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me.